How many songs do you think you wrote for Little Wayne? How many songs I wrote for Cash Money? Too, man. They ain't just that. They focusing on Wayne. It's Cash Money, man. Baby. It's running. Songs for running down. I never did nothing for Manny Fresh, man. Shout out to Manny Fresh, man. Real man. Yeah, I swim with the big, so I don't have time to deal with Willie the Squid. What's happening with you and Lil Wayne? Oh, man. Threw a shot at me, I threw one back. Guess mine stuck a little harder, you smell me? Yeah, man, we want to know, man, but you really writing this little Man. What's happening with that? That's a myth or what? That speaks for itself, man. What's happening? If you were a fan of hip-hop in the 2000s, then you might know that Lil Wayne and Gilly the Kid had beef. These two actually started off as friends on the same label, but the relationship would go sour. So today, we break down the entire history of Lil Wayne versus Gilly the Kid. So let's get into it. In 1999, a Philadelphia rap group by the name of Major Figures was heating up in the streets. After dropping several mixtapes on the underground circuit, Major Figures dropped their one and only studio album to date called Figures for Life on June 30th, 2000. After the release of this record, they would land a deal with Rough Nation Records. Members of the group were signing solo deals, and Gilly the Kid signed a deal with Cash Money Records. At the time, Lil Wayne was the hottest artist on the label. During this time, Lil Wayne was a member of the group The Hot Boys with Juvenile, Turk, and BG. Lil Wayne was also on a crazy solo run after dropping his second studio album Lights Out on December 19th, 2000 which would go on to sell 205,000 copies within the first week. Wayne followed up when he dropped 500 Degrees on July 23rd, 2002, which sold 141,000 copies in its first week. This album would debut at number 6 on the Billboard 200 chart, and it debuted at number 1 on the U.S. Top R&B and Hip Hop Albums chart. Now, during this time, Gilly the Kid was signed to Cash Money, but never got a chance to actually release some solo work. But instead, he was actually writing for a lot of the artists, as he would later claim. The beat between Lil Wayne and Gilly the Kid all started when Gilly would leave Cash Money Records over a disagreement over money with founders Birdman and Ronald Williams, otherwise known as Slim, in 2003. According to Gilly the Kid, they didn't want to give him the money he was asking for for his publishing, and he also says that he wasn't getting along with a lot of people around him at the label. Gilly noticed that Lil Wayne didn't even know what publishing money was, and he told Gilly that if he goes gold, he gets gold money, and if he goes platinum, he gets platinum money. So Gilly thought Lil Wayne didn't know what he was doing at all, and he also questioned why Lil Wayne's manager was signed to the label. But So what was y'all discrepancies at the cash money? What, what made you want to leave? No, only thing. The bounce check? Or? No, 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 no. Cause, cause one thing about one thing I can never say about Stun is he never he paid any money he ever owed me. Carla he paid, said that. He paid said that. that shit. He did call us uh, that. He ain't day. never. That's never no discrepancy I uh, mm. I had against Stun. You feel what I'm saying? I just saying it was just too much dick eating around that joint, man. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm just we men, bro. Uh. It, just because you got a hundred million dollars, that don't mean you better than me, man. I mean, God just blessed you to have a hundred million dollars. Right. You get you get cancer the day of tomorrow, and you this un mean, incurable. You yeah. can't take a hundred million dollars right. in a U-Haul truck to your motherfucking grave site behind you. Right. So at the end of the day, I look at it's like that's why Tony Draper. We when we met, we, it, we was like damn near like. Brothers. And that was prior to you, you meeting yeah, Birdman? Yeah, absolutely. You so feel you, must have, you must have tried to compare Birdman relationship to, 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 to I Drake. I did, him, but I just, you know when you think of my one way and then you get around a nigga and you like, man, this nigga ain't nothing like they say he is, man. Mm -hmm. Nothing like he betrayed to me and it ain't no disrespect to him. It's just, that's just how I felt. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and 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 it's, it's man, it's proof. Like, and every, all the that came in the game with them had to sue them to get their money. So that just, you know, that shit speak for itself. And that's where you and Lil Wayne caught smoke? No, me and Lil Wayne caught smoke because he just dissed me on a song called Problem Solver. After Gilly parted ways with Cash Money, Lil Wayne would go on a legendary run, dropping his fourth studio album, The Carter, on June 29th, 2004, and he followed up with The Carter 2 on December 6th, 2005. Gilly had no issues with Wayne and didn't say anything about him, 
but it wouldn't be until a couple months after dropping the Carter 2 that this beef would officially begin. On February 25th, 2006, Lil Wayne dropped a mixtape called The Carter 2 Part 2 Like Father Like Son, and on the track Problem Solver, he took shots at Gilly the Kid, telling him that he shouldn't mess with him. Gilly, man, I don't think you should really for me. Oh. It wasn't clear exactly why Lil Wayne dissed Gilly on this song. Gilly the Kid finally responded with the diss track on Lil Wayne called Cannon, where he would rip apart Lil Wayne, Birdman, and Slim throughout the song. God damn it, the way. Ho! God damn it, the Wayne Carter. You can stun her in his mouth. What you, Birdman daughter? You, you mentioned the kid and you know Philly way hard. You ain't Birdman Jr. You're silly, you're Gilly JR. Ask around the town. I cover the order. If you the fireman, then I'm a cold bucket of water. Stunner old grid. Stunner old whips. You even wife Trina. That's stunner old. Stupid. You're nothing like a G. You're more like a broad. You easy F baby, but F stands for fraud. Uh -huh. Come along, man, you're nothing like a threat. Four albums in the name, receive a publishing check. Stop playing with me, boy. Hey. Lil Wayne, uh -huh. for a OG spank you with the hell. Yeah. You ain't never touched five, I think you touch God. Oh. Kissing baby y'all in his mouth. Gilly would then appear on several DVDs, exposing what he actually did when he was signed to Cash Money. Gilly claimed that he wrote so many songs for Lil Wayne, and he also claimed that he practically wrote the entirety of Lil Wayne's album, The Carter. He also exposed how fake Wayne and Birdman are, saying that Lil Wayne actually borrowed his jewelry for the Bring It Back music video. How many songs do you think you wrote for Lil Wayne? How many songs I wrote for Cash Money? Too, man. They ain't just dip. They focusing on Wayne as Cash Money, man, baby. His so I never did nothing for Manny Fresh, man. Shout out to Manny Fresh, man. Real man. He really the motherfucking the heart of cash money. That's how you know they some ignorant, stupid. Anytime you can let the motherfucking brains of cash money leave, motherfucking stunning and slim ain't make, make it go around. Manny Fresh will make it go around. Yeah. Shout out to Juvenile. Now everybody from Cash Money that left, I'm still cool with. BG, Mac 10. Come on, man. Who and Gotti, Mickey TQ, shout out to all the niggas. Man, what's really going on, man? We came out here, man. We had to ask you, man. You know, we got niggas asking me from Baltimore, New York, DC, man. What's happening with you and Lil Wayne, man? What's oh man. You threw a shot at me, I threw one back. Guess mine stuck a little harder, you smell me? Yeah, man. We wanna know, man, was you really writing this little man? What's happening with that, man? That's a myth or what? That speak for itself, man. What's happening? I gotta I'm gonna do it like, we could do it like old school. Let me use like eight shit. You send a little girl a letter, yes or no, and then come back, check yes. <laughs> we gonna check the yes box. I Fake it. Uh, baby two, check that non-rapping. Okay, man. Shook up the world, man, a couple I years ago. Fuck these people at the I show. Get the f out of here, man. <laughs> that one from the A8. I got that state fly money. Ain't no baseball play. I got that A ride money. Huh? How about that? Hell of a deal. You ain't got that no more, though, brother. You would have said a million. I f around with a state, though. You 250. Or... <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do the <a> neck. <laughs> Try to do everything, man. It's cold blooded, man. But it's all good, man. I wasn't going to expose this. You did this to yourself. I'm, I'm an OG, man. You don't, you know what I mean? You don't f with OGs, man. So many kids out here, nigga, to play with, man. Why you want to play with me, man? I want to mention my name as much as I can expose, man. On the Cheddar DVD Volume 6, Gilly actually linked up with Gutta Gutta, Kid Kid, Young Yo, and Supa Blanco, who all had issues with Lil Wayne at the time. These squad niggas, they real niggas. Yeah. You know what I mean? They used to run with Lil Wayne fake ass niggas. But they, they, they peep game, trying to get to some money. And you know, I don't want y'all to put them in this because they ain't, you know, this is me talking. This is me. I stand yeah. my own motherfucking weight. This is me. They was with fake ass Lil Wayne, old fake ass. And you know they peep game. They was trying to get some of this right here. Let me show you. They was trying to get some of this right here. You feel These me? They was trying to get some of that motherfucking money, man. So we, we don't hold this money this. around here. <laughs> 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 
We don't fold this money. Now, I'm in New York with about 30 on me. And I'm, I'm looking for a club to go to so we can drink Chrissy and get pissy. Holler at your boy, like King of Philly. Holler at your boy, man. You see that, man? Huh? All you see is yellow, red, green, and blue. Man, I wrote a whole bunch of shit for them fake ass. Baby, you Shout out to Slim, you blind bitch. Can you see me? Huh? Can you see me, bitch? You blind ass motherfucker. Get your motherfucker. You can't, hey, Wayne, get your money right now. Everybody didn't leave for nothing, man. Shout out to Manny Fresh, Juvenile, BG, Turk, motherfucking Mac 10, Mickey, Boone, Gotti. Everybody who left. Just, everybody who left, man. Hello. Shout out to them, Hello. man. Shout out to them, man. Hello. What was going on over there? Tell me the situation. A lot of ass. You know what I'm saying? No one getting no money, man. I mean, I, I can't personally speak for myself because since I've been on cash money, I moved three times. The baby ain't played with me about my motherfucking money, but. You know, niggas ain't eating, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas wasn't, niggas wasn't eating over there, so niggas had to, you know, migrate to a different location, man. You know, like my niggas, the squad niggas right here. You feel me? Man, I've been ghost writing for ever since I got around cash money. That was the first time I ever ghost written anything. You hear me? But you know, the bitch ain't want to put me out because I ain't want to sell a whole no publishing. You know what I mean? He talking about 50% for 300,000, and I'm talking about 50% for 2 million. Now, why don't you meet me somewhere in the middle, bitch, and we could do business. But, you know, he ain't know how to handle business, so, you know what I'm saying? You f boy. Look at kill you, stunner, to see this shit, don't you? And you know I got four of these, though. Four of them. That's the piece Lil Wayne had on in the video right there. I got four of them. I'm light tonight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to get a stick-up voice too much. You know, I put all this shit on. They ain't going to have no choice but to try to rob a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah! I'll let you boy. Right for anybody other than um Nobody other than them fake ass, man. Them two fake ass kissing in the mouth. Why did he kiss in the mouth like that? I mean What's up with that? I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't even feel comfortable kissing my six year old son on his lips. You know what I'm saying? All I know all the mob is kiss you on the cheek when they gonna kill you. And that you mean know? good night. That mean good night. I ain't never seen two niggas kiss on the lips that one so you know. Uh, Holla at your boy. Uh, and, and the gangsters in Philly depicted uh, that since you wanna be me so much, when we catch you, we're gonna cut your hair off, give you a baldy. Ha nigga, yeah! Holla at your boy. <laughs> Lil Wayne was asked about Gilly the Kid while on the set for the shooter music video, where Wayne would pretend that he doesn't know who he is. Later that year, Gilly dropped the track called Frontin' Like Ya Daddy, which was a spin-off of Lil Wayne and Birdman's song called Stuntin' Like My Daddy where Gilly once again sent shots at Wayne, Birdman, and Slim. You so lame, you mention in my name, tear drops upon your face and you ain't never killed the thing. Kill the thing. Where's your brains, little man, is you insane? Now what's his name? Wheezy fucking baby. Wait, I know y'all get it. Wheezy fucking baby. On April 13th, 2007, Lil Wayne dropped his mixtape to Drought 3. And on the tracks Live from 504 and I'm Blooded, he took shots at Gilly Dick Kid. Wayne actually freestyled the song Live from 504 on BET's Rap City in 2007. Live from the 504, it's Mr. Crazy Flow, jumping like a bungee, no rope. Even in the dungeon, I glow. Even if it ain't sunny, I glow. If it ain't about money, I go. Nowhere I'm nailed to the flow. I am a sail to the water, money's to sail to my boat. And it's going down, it's going down like there's a whale in the boat. And you can smell what I smoke. And yep, I sip that lean. You hit me with that combination and make my eyes bleed. I'm a shark in the water, yeah, I swim with the big. So I don't have time to deal with Willie the Squid. On August 8th, 2007, Lil Wayne did an interview with King Magazine, and when he was asked about Gilly the Kid claiming that he wrote the Carter, he refuted this accusation, saying that he recorded it notebook free as of the Carter, meaning Wayne records in four bar spurts, punching in and out over the course of the session, with breaks for calls, drinks, and drugs until the song is done. No paper, no ghostwriting. Wayne then went on to say, in quotes, Ma Effers considering me the best. You got six mixtapes out. No one considers you for anything. Why you ain't spit Wayne shit on yours then? What kind of dude can write for another dude and sound better than they self? Who the F is you? Neo? I'ma keep it real. You can go ask my old squad up click. We wouldn't even messin' with cash money when I recorded Carter 1. 
Baby and me weren't seeing eye to eye with that squad up side project. We recorded that all on our own. The interview then asked if Gilly contributed in any ideas in his side projects, which Wayne responded saying, no nah, sir. My daddy been buried since I was 14 and I put that on his soul. After that, this beef would go completely quiet until in 2010, Lil Wayne was arrested for weapon charges and was sentenced to 8 months in New York's Rikers Island jail. During his jail time, a video surfaced of Gilly the Kid with a message for Lil Wayne, telling him to hold his head up while behind bars. Shout out to Wayne. Hold your head. You in there where it's real. You on the other side. I feel you with both hands and feet. People thought that this beef was officially squashed, but that didn't seem to be the case. In May of 2022, Lil Wayne and Gilly the Kid actually ran into each other at a Jackson State University event. So Gilly went on a podcast and said that Lil Wayne ran from him and he was shook after a brief handshake. Did you and um, Young Money ever fix your situation? I mean, we, we never really had no situation, you know. I mean, he dissed me, I came back, I dissed him. You know, but it's just that I guess my disc is just taken way too serious. Like when I mm -hmm. when I diss a motherfucker, it's just like Have you talked to Mac Main or Wayne? Yeah, or? I just seen Wayne at, at uh Jackson State University. Oh, did y'all holler at each other? Yeah, but no. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> okay, mean, what does that mean? Uh, yeah. He looked up, I was in the doorway. <laughs> I said, What's up, man? He said, uh-huh. Hit you. Oh, okay. And got the f out of there. Dang. Real talk. So well, I mean, I it's not like But it but so that shows you though at least something though, because it's a handshake. I least. mean, Mac Main, you know, Mac stayed there hollered, you know what I mean? Cause we like, what's up, man? We trying to get him on the podcast. Mac like, hey, you know, man, we gotta discuss something. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck do we gotta discuss, man? We sitting down, we having a conversation, man. We grown ass men, man. We not we can't be possibly operating off some shit that happened in 2004, 2005. <laughs> I mean, are we? Are we? Are we operating off some shit that happened 17 years ago? Are you? No. Does it, but does Wayne feel that you are? No, he can't possibly feel that I am. <laughs> I mean, no. he, maybe, because yeah. then he said you have to talk first, so then he probably wants no, to Mac straighten. No, Mac said that. Wayne didn't say that, no, but so Mac, I can't. But Mac is M Wayne's mouthpiece. They're basically the same individual who comes to mouthpiece, I mean, though. I ain't, man, we <laughs> was young, you know. What, what people fail to realize is that Wayne shot at me first on Problem Solver. Mm -hmm. I never had an issue with no nigga ever in the music industry. Yeah. Any, anybody I ever had an issue with, they did some shit to me first. Mac Main, who was also at the event, got wind of this. So he posted a video of the actual interaction on Instagram, where it appeared that Gilly was actually lying about Wayne being scared of him, with the caption, Boy, 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 this Hollywood shit crazy. Please watch both videos and say at Rock Topics, you know I love you, but please keep us out of these type of convos. You'll probably never get the truth. I know the name of your show, it's tricky, but don't let them trick you. And if you wrote the Carter one, who wrote the Carter 2, 3, 4, and 5? After that, nothing else happened. Lil Wayne and Gilly the Kid still haven't fully resolved their issues. It seems as if Wayne doesn't have a problem with Gilly, but obviously, Gilly still feels a certain way towards Lil Wayne.